Hey everyone, it's Remnant. Welcome to episode three of Balboa Zoo in Planet Zoo. If you are joining me now in the present, we are all quarantined and it's such an insane time um, globally. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are trying your best to stay safe and healthy and positive. I know I have had a lot of time to catch up on some stuff that I've wanted to um, when it comes to uh, building in Planet Zoo, um, just finishing up some stuff, some polishing up some stuff that um, I've been putting off. So it's been kind of nice to have some extra time. And I just wanted to let you guys know that um, this episode today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're not really doing the step-by-step -step, uh, building process kind of video. Today is going to be more of a walkthrough video. Um, and that's just because I totally was just building so sporadically the past like two or three months or however long it's been. Um, and I wasn't really focusing on building to film a video. So sorry about that. Um, but hopefully the next one, um, we'll be able to do more of a process one. Um, yeah, but uh, this uh, entry plaza is pretty much the same. I just kind of wanted to show you guys some things that I've added. Um, it obviously still has a, a desert motif, but I wanted to make it seem a little bit more lush. Um, so I added just some date palms, which you can see um, in the back over here. And I think just adding, like, um, once you build more to the zoo, just kind of seeing, like, this canopy that starts to develop in the back, it just already gives a sense of um, lushness. <laughs> Um, it just kind of gives a sense of uh, everything feeling a little bit more lush and a little bit more tropical, even though this is like a desert themed um, entrance plaza. So there are some more things. There's there's a little bit more things that need to be polished, but I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I, I built like this exit area, uh, which I wanted to keep separate, obviously, from the entrance area over here. Right now, all the guests are using this to get in here just because it's like the quickest way to enter. Um, but yeah, I've kind of built this out a little bit. Um, it's still very unfinished, but I just wanted to show you guys some things that I added um, just to seem a little bit more realistic and to give a little bit more life, I guess, um, a little bit more functionality to um, this outside area. Okay, so in the last episode, uh, you guys kind of saw me really... Um, struggle with this <laughs> with what to do with this entrance area over here um and i i did come up with a solution that i really liked um and i did keep a lot of that motif but i will tell you i changed almost the whole thing again so basically there is if you guys don't remember there was a lot of overgrown um trees and it just looked a little bit older and that's not really what I wanted it to look like. Um, I do want it to look like it's, you know, it was designed maybe in like the past five years or so. Um, so I just took out the big overgrown trees, um, put in more organic shapes, um, you know, with like uh, the planters over here. And it just looks a little bit more fresh and a little bit more inviting. Um, and it definitely looks a lot more Southern Californian. Uh, I added this little thing over here. I figured it would be like cool to to you know maybe take some pictures in front of before you go to the rest of the park i you know used some of ricey's fonts uh who is an awesome builder and an awesome font designer um which i'm sure you guys all already know already but um yeah i just added that and uh, i really dig the look of it i think it's simple it looks like it was cheap to make uh, but it does the job uh so over here uh, in the last episode, it was just kind of like steps right here. And uh, I actually recently visited the San Diego Zoo, which is what um, Balboa Zoo draws a lot of its inspiration from. And I noticed that it was all, you know, families and moms, like with their strollers and, um, you know, maybe some people like in wheelchairs that were coming and they don't want to mess with having to find a ramp. So <laughs> putting a ramp right here um, on a really, really, really shallow incline. Um was something that was really important for me to add. So um, this used to be steps. Now it's a really slight incline. Um, and there's also one right here on this side. And uh, I just think it looks a lot more realistic. And if we come to this side over here, you'll see that I still kept, it still keeps the integrity of like um, this like mosaic fountain wall. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't really change anything there. It still looks great. Um, and it's still, uh, and it has now like more functionality and it's more, um, I guess, ADA friendly. <laughs> That's what that is, right? ADA. 
God bless. Uh, let's go over here to the flamingos. Not a lot has changed over here, but we have some planters over here, which actually look really cool at night too. They're just windows, but they kind of um, give off a cool light at night, which I will show you guys later. Yeah, so not much has changed over here. The flamingos are still, they're still doing great. Um, I made sure to turn off <laughs> animal wel welfare and I made sure to turn off um, like animal aging and birth and all that stuff so they can't multiply anymore but um there's a lot in here but this is like how many there are at other zoos that i've seen and like at sea world and stuff like that so not too worried they have a lot of space they like never come over here but they have definitely a lot of space um over here i added across over here i added more like observation points um which i'm so glad that people use this is actually my first time opening the zoo and seeing everyone in here um so yeah and past past there you can kind of see a glimpse into the future which i'm not going to show you in today's episode so be sure to subscribe it's such a typical zoo move to put um flamingos right at the front but i think it really um it really does the job and it's such a great way to welcome people into the zoo all right so to the right of the flamingos is something that i'm very excited to show you guys um it is the bus tour or it's the the, the bus depot so the bus depot that is at the san diego zoo right now is um it's very charming in that it is very outdated um but to the point where if they changed it i would be upset because that means my childhood is gone um but in this zoo i didn't feel the need to preserve my childhood so i just uh kind of I, I went off a couple references. Um, one was the basic layout of the one at the San Diego Zoo. And then another one was the monorail depot or the monorail station that is in downtown Disney um, in California. This took forever. This was such a hard build. Um, I can't I can't even explain to you how I did it. But basically, this was a huge cylinder. And then I just took this part, um, this little segment off and then raised it. Um so that's the process for that that's the simplified process for that but um let's go ahead and kind of take this this is still a little bit unfinished but i wanted to show you guys um so you take this little walk over here um this is cool because it'll you know one day be a view to you know some other parts of the zoo um and it's very this is like very sunken in down here which i'm excited to get to in the future um but uh, we just take this we just take this little path over here um, to get to the to rest of the queue and uh, and something that I really wanted to convey just in every part I guess of this zoo is how um, how lush and grown in everything is I mean for the most part the whole all of San Diego Zoo is like just super mature trees and you just feel um, closed in but not in a bad way just you feel very immersed in like uh, a jungle. I mean, the the whole the zoo is basically also a botanical garden. So, I really wanted to capture that feeling um, in this zoo as well, and I wanted to kind of challenge myself to see if I can do that in Planet Zoo. And I think for the most part, so far, it's it's working. So here's the queue for the bus tour. Obviously, this doesn't really function in the game because we don't have buses. Um, but I'm super excited because Hot Dog uh, designed this <laughs> awesome, like, double-decker bus. Um, let's go out here and see. It's, I mean, it's totally, like, it. it's so, like, spot-on to what the actual double-decker, uh, to what the actual double-decker buses look like at the San Diego Zoo. So, super thankful to him, um, or super thankful for him. Um, but let's go ahead and go up here. So since this wasn't functional, I wasn't really forcing myself to make like, or to, to try and do like two meter paths just because it's like, I'm not going to spend time on paths that no one can actually go on. <laughs> so I decided to just build some stairs and these, <laughs> these stairs are pretty intricate, but it was still easier to build these than to actually make paths that worked. <laughs> Uh, so you just go up here. This is still kind of unfinished up here. I would like to add some um, some more railings up here to kind of show, you know, where you'd get on and stuff or where you'd be waiting. Uh, but I'm really digging how this turned out. Uh, I, I decided to just keep it 
um, kind of like a faded blue uh, or like a faded aqua blue. That's uh, that's the color that they're working with at the San Diego Zoo, and it it, it looks like you know it maybe it was like a darker color a while ago, and um, they just decided to not repaint it because no one's got time for that. Um, but I'm I'm really digging how it looks, and I think it it kind of keeps that up that outdated charm, but the architecture still looks um, pretty modern and pretty timeless. All right, and then if we keep going down here. Um, Right across from the bus depot is, uh, you can see that I'm starting a little bit of an in, of an interior inside of the um, the Fleet Science Center, which is something that I wasn't really planning on doing, but a lot of people have been doing some great interiors, and I wanted to try my hand at it, um, and so I did, and I didn't like anything that, I, that I'm doing, so um, I'm having someone else build something in there, and I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, but you'll just have to see. Subscribe. Things that other people notice at the zoos are like, animals but i notice sunken in restrooms <laughs> and i wanted to challenge myself to build one it's something that i wanted to do just because i didn't want uh you know there to just be a, a restroom like right off the side um because i feel like it would just have messed with um all of the landscaping that's going on and i kind of love that it's kind of hidden um it's obviously there you can see it um it's outdated it has the uh it has the, I don't know, I don't know what era this would be, but it's like the Pizza Hut roof. Um, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, it's just super simple, but this just kind of adds to, uh, I guess, some of the, um, this somehow makes it feel a little bit more lush. I don't know why. I think just because it's sunken in and there's so many different levels, it just makes it, it definitely gives a little bit more dimension and more life um, to this area. And we're literally talking about a sunken in restroom but it's still very effective um and actually over here this is one of my favorite viewpoints uh of the of the zoo so far i just love um the winding paths and you can see that this is a very slight incline going up and or i guess going down for people going this way but um i'm super excited uh to see how this is all gonna kind of like um turn out in the future but I guess something I wanted to explain is that um, this is actually going to be like pretty much the main path, which it seems a little bit thin. Um, but when you go to the San Diego Zoo, this is actually like a little bit of a thinner path. And there's so many people going down here and people kind of get squished. But it's kind of like it's kind of like the charm. It's like, wow, like, OK, well, this is such an old zoo that like we really can't change this right now. Um, and then on this side, this is like a service road. Um, that I guess people can technically use in the game if they want to, but this is just a service road. I still need to add something like over here so that, you know, you can't cross it or whatever, but, um, that's this side of the park. I'm going to show you now, um, some, some of like the meat of the episode. Um, wow, it's so crowded over here. Uh, so, all right. So I... Um, decided to kind of stray away from the San Diego Zoo design or layout, I guess, um, because what they have over here to the left of the entrance and to the left of the flamingos is kind of just like just a street. And then there's like some stores over here, but it's kind of boring. <laughs> um, so I wanted to play off of the Balboa Park motif, which is, uh, you know, like Spanish colonial revival or Spanish. No, Sp Spanish mission revival something like that just google images of Balbo park um but i wanted to kind of add a little bit of a modern touch to it so it basically just turned into like mall <laughs> architecture which is cool too um but these are basically just um gift shops um and it's placed right next to the um the new exit which these people are using as entrance but it's okay and uh god it is so crowded i'm so sorry oh my lord living this is uh i added these bathrooms over here which are right next to the en to the exit and uh i kind of wanted to show that this was built you know obviously like after this but it was meant to kind of reflect the architectural style of this building um and this was obviously built a long time after um i'm, I'm thinking that this area was probably built around the same time that the new entrance was built um and uh, the way that I was able to kind of tie that all in together was to add more of the mosaic motif, um, like over here, 
um, as well as over here, which we will go to soon. But I wanted to show you um, this over here. So over here, we have... This is way too... I'm so sorry. This is so crowded. Um, we have this uh, restaurant over here that is called the Safari Kitchen. Um, this is literally an exact like replica of what they have at the zoo right now. Yeah, over here is a really cool like observation deck um, that I want to add like some binoculars to. But this is all stuff that I, I'm going to show you in the future. Um, it, this stuff isn't really done yet. So, but I just kind of wanted to show you what was over here. Um, and over here, there's um, there's that path that goes to the flamingo, the flamingo that goes to the flamingo viewing area. And then once you go to the left, it uh, is going to take you to some um, monkey exhibits, um, which is cool. Um, but let's go ahead and go back over here to the massive crowds of people. Um, so this is another plaza that I created. Um, and like I said before, um, in the San Diego Zoo, it, this, this whole area is just a little bit lackluster. And it just doesn't look like it has any cohesive design. And that's something that I really wanted to change um, and kind of make my own. So um, I decided to... Uh, add like a really nice restaurant over here um, which is just it's still a quick um, a quick service restaurant um, so there's all the seating out here around this uh, this fountain um, which I love I actually really really like this like this path here with some there's some backstage access over here um, and then here's the restaurant oops I didn't finish that wall um, but there's no interior <laughs> you just go in and get out and get your food. Um, and there's this really awesome little uh, like courtyard seating area that's not quite finished yet. And I love that no one's using it, um, but it's here and it looks awesome. And I really like the kind of like feel that you get. Um, and it definitely has that San Diego vibe to it. So um, across the path over here or across the plaza is the reptile house which is one of my favorite little builds. Um, this again is for the most part like an exact um, like replica with some minor changes of the one in that is in um, the San Diego Zoo. So before going in, I guess I want to kind of um, point out something. So this is like the original building. Um, and then over here we have the um, Komodo dragon exhibit, which I wanted to kind of... I kind of wanted to show that it's just like it's an extension like it's an add-on it's an addition and you can kind of see because they're like there's like those bricks that maybe look a little bit outdated and this looks like it might have been built like maybe like in the 80s or something um and like they've just like repainted it over the years um to to not make it look like you know too old and to kind of keep up with some um with some of the design trends but um i wanted it to look pretty dated and um just like it's an addition so i hope that that kind of like see that through this so we can go ahead and go in there's honestly nothing that special about it um it's just rows and rows of different reptiles and uh it's really cool to see people in here now because they're doing exactly like you know what what um they would be doing at the uh the san diego zoo um it's crazy because you know, there's just like these windows right here, um, and there's such a crazy glare all the time on this um, at the actual San Diego Zoo. So that's something that I wanted to um, kind of add to this. It's like these. It kind of sucks to come in here like um, when it's like bright outside. You kind of have to come in here during a certain time of the day when there's not a lot of natural light coming in. Uh, what's kind of cool about at the San Diego Zoo is it's just a mix. Like there's there's not really any organization to it. Um, so it's just a mix of these different reptiles, which I kind of love. This is a cool, like, albino one, which I guess I was lucky to get. It was just, like, on the marketplace. I still don't get how that marketplace works. I honestly don't. I don't know how a lot of this game works, but I just I just build and do what stuff that looks good. Um, and then here is some backstage access for the Komodo Dragon exhibit, which is what I'm going to show you next. I'm very excited about it. So let's go all the way over here. And yes, it's kind of dumb that it doesn't make a complete circle, but... 
we love a flawed design because that's what they do at the San Diego Zoo, so I'm just going to keep it. But on this side is the Komodo dragon exhibit. I hate that this glass is so, like, <laughs> non-viewable. There's such a weird glare on it. Um, but this is the Komodo dragon exhibit. We can just go in here. Um, yeah, I really wanted to keep it simple um, and kind of make it look like it's, you know, you know a little bit older. Um, but I really like how it turned out. Uh, he seems to enjoy it. Um, this is pretty big compared to a lot of other Komodo dragon exhibits I've seen. Or maybe it's just pretty standard. I don't know. Or maybe it's really small. I don't know. And uh, there's this little information area. And over here um, is kind of like something that I really like at the San Diego Zoo. They have like this slanted wall um, with this like outdated looking <laughs> like roof. And it's just, it's, I mean, this one looks a lot better than the one that's at the zoo. So I'm, I'm really, I'm happy with how it looks. And I, I like that I was able to capture like the kind of tackiness of it. And if, if you notice, you'll see that this is on a very slight incline. Um, the whole freaking park is on a slight incline and so that's been very challenging uh but it's been fun this is something you cannot see subscribe um so over here we actually have some working exhibits which i'm excited about um by some i mean one so over here we have oh hello we have um the nile monitor um which hello uh it's right there Maybe there wouldn't actually be a Nile monitor in here because, I don't know. And realistically, there is like a netting above here, but we don't have that. Like, we just don't have that in this game um, yet. So maybe once we get that, I can put some on top and it will actually look a little bit more realistic. He would be a little bit more contained. Um, you know, you wouldn't worry about people, you know, putting their hands in there and getting bitten or bit, bitten. Ugh love English. Um, but I'm really excited with how this came out. It just looks, um, you know, they, they tried, they tried, they succeeded. Okay. It looks real. All right. By they, I mean me, cause no one helped me. This is a really weird pathway. I don't know why it's like this, but it's like this at the zoo, at the San Diego zoo. So I'm like, I'm going to build this. I'm just going to rebuild it. I don't know why it looks like that, but Hey, it's okay. So here is another implied um, exhibit and uh, oh yes yes sir just walk right through there I am not going to change this path um, <laughs> but usually what's in here there's like I think that there's like iguanas and kind of like non-harmful lizards I don't know if a monitor lizard would be harmful but there should be some netting over it uh, and then if you walk around here it just takes you back around um, back to the plaza. Uh, so over here we have some, um, you know, backstage access and, uh, some cool like skylights over here, which I really dig. Um, there's a path. <laughs> there's a narrow path with a step. So that's awesome. Um, and something that's cool is like when you go in here, um, there's you know a door to go in there um <laughs> that's so lame yeah if you'll notice already i'm obviously way more focused on architecture and not the animals the animals are literally just oh oh that's not okay this actually makes me really mad i did not know that this was even possible in this game <laughs> I hate playing with people. This, I think, is going to be temporary. It's just here for right now. But I wanted to show you one of my favorite views in the park. Um, it is this one. <laughs> Especially once you zoom in on Tejid Cam. Isn't this so nice? It just looks... Gosh, it looks so like established and so nice. And uh, <laughs> I'm really proud of this little view right here. But... Um, yeah Ooh. yeah a lot of people ask me uh how i like i guess get the park looking so like lush and stuff and it's just all about like you know layers i think um using a lot of like really tall 
um, trees to add like a canopy in the background. Um, and then just kind of like going down in size um, is what has been helping me when it comes to creating um, like a lush uh, background. Um, I just don't feel like I am able to, you know, talk well today for some reason. I blame it on the quarantine. Um, but a lot of people have been asking and it's just, just mess around with different trees that you normally wouldn't use. Um, these are like monstrous trees. I think they're the, they're the K, K-Pok, K-Pok, God bless. But just mess with trees that you normally wouldn't use because they're huge and monstrous and just put them in the back and, um, and then put some of the shorter trees that are still tall, like in the front and you'll get this really just like lush, um, immersive like canopy. Uh, and I just, I really like, I really love how this all looks together it looks so realistic um and i'm very excited i'm very excited to see it with people you guys are like catching my reaction to seeing people in here for the first time and i'm very excited yeah so that is it for episode three once again it was very jumbled um kind of a mess and i don't really know what i'm doing still when it comes to talking um to people on video um i'm never comfortable on it I'm trying so hard to be quiet and talking to the mic because I don't want my roommates to hear. Because no one knows that I have a gaming channel. This is my ASMR channel. Anyways, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope that you don't un unsubscribe after this. Um, no, this will not turn into an ASMR channel. This will still be strictly Planet Zoo, Planet Coaster uh, content. Let's be real, I'm never going to do Planet Coaster again. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments. I love validation. I love to be told that I'm doing a good job. So please, please tell me. I hope that you guys have an awesome day. Stay safe. Stay um, six feet away from me. Wash your hands. Um, sanitize constantly. And subscribe. Subscribe.